When were you born? I was born November the 10th, 1930. Where were you born? In Lower Cambridge. How many siblings did you have? I have uh, two sisters and one brother living, and one, two brothers deceased. What did your parents do for a living? Mm, farming, and also my father was in the meat business. Um, he uh, raised and bought pigs and made, uh, had cured the pork and sold bacon and ham <coughs> in the St. John's City Market. And that was a big business in wartime. Uh, sold a lot of meat. And then he also bought animals, so uh, went around the county buying like cows and pigs and yeah. Um, where did you go to school? <clears throat> well I started out in Central Cambridge and that school isn't there anymore and I went from grade one to nine there and then I went to high school in Gagetown. It's called Gagetown Grammar School and I graduated after grade, I took 10 and 11, graduated at the end of grade 11. There wasn't any grade 12 in those days. And then from there, um, we had to write entrance papers, provincial papers, and uh, if we passed those, we were eligible to go to teacher's college. And so I went there and uh, graduated from there in 1947. Did you have a favorite teacher when you were in school? Well, at the elementary uh, school, I mean from grades one to nine, uh, I had Ethel Smith. She was Ethel Black from Cambridge, and uh, she married Gerald Smith, and she was my teacher for three years. And in those three years, because I was the only one in the grade, we had very small enrollment in the school. I took uh, grade four, and the next year I took five and six together, and the next year I took grade seven. So I took four grades in three years. What was school like when you were young? Well, as I said, there were so few of us that we didn't do the things that you people do. Of course, we didn't have uh, any extracurricular uh, subjects or any, but we had a good time. We liked school and always wanted to go. And we played, I played our own little games. And like in the winter time, what it was called, we'd play Knicker Knocker. And uh, um, let me see now. Ring on the string, let me see, and I can't think now, hopscotch. We would draw the hopscotch board at the front of the uh, form on the front of the floor at the front of the school, I'll get it right, and uh, we played hopscotch a lot. And then out in the summertime we'd play Haley over, do you know what that is? No, one I'm group would stand on one side of the school and the other and you'd throw the ball up over the school and you call out Haley over, <laughs> and uh, so they'd be ready to catch the ball on the other side. And uh, oh, we played, we tried to play a little bit of just bat the ball, but we didn't have enough to play, you know, a ball or team. But we always had a good time. Uh, how was school different from uh, back then till now? Well, we we didn't have all those extra things that you people are doing, so I think we spent more time in our subjects. You know, they yeah. three hours. <laughs> uh, then you'd do probably, but uh, and we had a very small library, just one little case at the front of the school, and we would have library period once in a while, and we tended to get the same books and read over because it wasn't. A, but uh, and we had an organ in our school, and uh, Mrs. M Mrs. Black Miss Black she was then. She could play the organ, so we did some singing with her. What was home like growing up? Home, um, well, we had a good time at home, but we were brought up, I always say we were brought up young to be very mature in, in our work. We always had to work, and uh, by the time I was 12 years old, I could keep house the same as I can now. So, um, we had a baby sister who, uh, our mother was sick, and so we had to take care of her, even nights, getting up and getting her bottle warmed and all those things. That, so we grew up very young. And in the summertime, of course, we had to pick berries and beans and potatoes and all those things like you still have to do. Who was your best friend growing up? 
Well, we were such a, um, the school was so small that I, uh, one of my best friends left when I was in grade three, and uh, Marguerite Thorne, her name was, she's Marguerite Jolks now, and she lives in Fredericton. And then it was just our own family, more or less. There was another girl, uh, Gwenny, Gwendolyn Pugsley, she was now. She's Gwendolyn Monahan from Hampton. And then my cousins, of course, were best friends, too. Well, it was much different. First of all, we didn't have school buses. And so, and our roads weren't plowed in the wintertime. Like, we had to walk a mile to school. Snow would get very deep, like it does here on stormy days. And um, anyway, I was putting the fire on for one year, and I can remember going uh, through that snow and being nearly frozen by the time I got to school. Then we get the, I'd get the fire on, and then after a while, the rest of the family would come and the teacher. The school room would be so cold because it wasn't a fire all night, and uh, we'd all sit around the stove in the middle of the school and pull our desks up and sit there and. and and little by little, get warmer and warmer until it got hot, and we'd pull back, pull back, and finally we'd get back in our own place. Um, the, the other thing I want to mention about the slates, we didn't have, we did have scribblers, we wrote some things in, but a lot of our math and English exercises, things like that, or if we had to write out our lesson, it was on a slate. And in our desk, we had, on our desk, we had a little fancy bottle that we had water in, might be mum's vanilla bottle or lemon extract bottle, just a pretty little bottle we could find, that's what we liked. Well, in the wintertime sometimes they would freeze, and uh, so we wouldn't have a lot of water until they thawed out a bit. In our desk we had a slate cloth, and you'd sprinkle the water on your de a slate, and then you'd get out that slate cloth. And having it in the desk wet, like it was sometimes, that it would smell musty but you'd poke it back in your desk and use it over and over. And um, then I wanted to mention at noon, we, like my family, would be at least four going all the time. For lunches, lots of times we took canned soup. And so just before noon time, one of us would be allotted to open up the soup, get it on the stove, put the milk in, and get it heated, and we'd have that along with our dinner. And we really liked that. Our water, we didn't have a well, we had to go to a neighboring house to get water. And so in the morning, there'd be somebody allotted to go. with this galvanized pail to get water. And most of the time, we went up to the house who now Mrs. Waldo lives in um, to get the water. I went to high school in Gagetown, as I said, at grade uh, 10 and 11. And we boarded there, of course. Uh, board in those days was $5 a week. And even if you stayed the weekend, it would still be $5. Of course, we didn't get home all the weekends because there was no ferry, and the road wasn't built up from Lower Jemsag to the ferry, even the water was over the road. What kinds of things did you do with your friends? Well, there wasn't any television or anything like that in those days, so we had to invent our own games. My sister and I, I remember especially, we played house a lot, and we played it out in an outside uh, kitchen we called it on the house and we had a little room there and we have a table and a little stand and we'd pretend that we were in the restaurant and one would order and the other well then we didn't have any money to pay but we went out and got lilac leaves off of the trees and they were all nice and smooth and big and so that's what we used for dollar bills and we played house and uh, then we would go up overhead in the woodshed we had a little ladder to go up where my dad kept uh, baskets, tomato baskets. And in those days, they had covers on the top with a hole, a little slit in the top. And that had a nice little bright red net, you know, so that you could see in the tomatoes. These are the baskets, they sold tomatoes. And we'd rip the, <laughs> the net off of those back covers, and we'd use those to trim our little area where we were keeping house up over the woodshed. Just funny little things we did. Um, we played dolls, and then as we got older, we played game. Excuse me, games. Um, 
Mm, party house games mainly. We played cards in those days as we got older. Mm -hmm. Snakes and ladders. Um, what was your first job? First job that I remember, I always worked. We did home. We always had housework. And uh, but the first job that I ever earned any money outside was uh, picking strawberries. And then uh, I got to send a box. And the lady where I picked, she said, if I got a hundred boxes that afternoon, she'd give me a dollar. Well, that was something I never heard tell them. Well, anyway, I worked so hard, I got 90 boxes, but she gave me the dollar. And so that was interesting. And when I went to teacher's college, um, the board there was $9 a week, so it went up $4 a week. <laughs> And we were there, of course, most all weekends. The road from Gemsag to Fredericton wasn't built up, and so it wasn't good driving a lot of the time. And then the water was over the year in the spring, and so we stayed there. We had a few weekends home. But it was some different from the boarding prices today, that's for sure. When did you first learn to drive? I didn't learn to drive until I was 30... I have to stop and think about this, 38 years old. And it was after my daughter was going to get her driver's or beginner's license, and but I got mine before she did, but that's how old it was, yes, 38. What was your first car? In my family, um, my dad always had a car, and ever since I could remember, and the Gunters uh, always had cars. so. I, my husband died in 85, and uh, I bought a different car, I would think in 86 or 87, so that would be my first car. It wasn't a new car, but uh, yes. When I graduated from high school, I was 15 years old, but remember, there wasn't any grade 12 in those days, and also remember, I took two grades one year, so that's how come I was ahead of myself. I went to teacher's college, uh, there was a shortage of teachers, so they uh, had two classes. One group went in in June, came out in December, and uh, the next group, of which I was a member, went in in January, came out in June. Now prior to that four months that I came out of high school before I went to teacher's college, I was on local license, we called it, and so I taught at White's Cove for four months before I went to teacher's college. When I graduated, I was 16 from Teachers College. Then I had to teach two years. I just had a temporary license. You taught two years, and with the recommendation of your county superintendent, you get your permanent license, which I did after that two years of teaching. Tell us about your teaching experience. Well, so much different from what it is now. Uh, it's a rural. Um, classroom and uh, at one time I had grades one to nine included so everyone it was so different there was such a respect for the teacher in those days and it had no problem with uh, students the with that many grades and helping they always wanted to help out like the older ones if you were hearing spelling or checking math and the younger grades, they always wanted to help. And that was good too. Um, at Christmas, we always had a Christmas concert and uh, they wanted to do that so bad. And I talked to them about it and said, well, to practice, uh, we don't have a lot of time, but you know, we could stay after school and practice. Well, they were all agreed to that. Now school went in at nine and didn't get out till four. So after that, they would, uh, want to practice or recess or noon or something like that and we had a great Christmas concert I remember the first one we had that was when I was still on local license um, and the hall we had it in the hall at night and the hall was packed with all the friends and relatives and uh, that was a big event Santa Claus arrived and distributed presents and, yeah, it was a good time what did you do on your free time well, I don't know what I did. <laughs> um, as I said, in summertime, you mean in school, the free time, or just regular? Just regular free time. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, we would swim in the summertime. And uh, I don't know, there was always weeding to do or, you know, or housework to do. Yeah, it was, um, I can't remember, when our cousins would come, like, on the weekends, we'd play games outdoors, hide-and-go-seek. We played, uh, and we played that, it would be almost dark. And everybody would be hiding behind buildings and, you know, out there trying to find people. It was exciting. Did you play any sports when you were young? Not a lot, because we never had enough to play any real sport. We skated in the winter time, and uh, we had a lot of bonfires. And I don't know if you ever, you people ever went to a bent bonfire or not. But somebody would gather wood along the shores and put out on the ice a big and lot of pile, and then they light that, and everybody would gather, stand around the bonfire. Not a lot because we never had enough to play any real sport. We skated in the winter time, and. Uh, we had a lot of bonfires, and I don't know if you, ever, you people ever went to a bent bonfire or not, but somebody would gather wood along the shores and put out on the ice a big and lot of pile, and then they'd light that, and everybody would gather, stand around the bonfire and get warm, then go out and skate, come back and warm up again, and that was a big thing. We'd take our skates off at the shore, or sorry, take our boots off at the shore and leave them on the shore, and uh, then we'd skate an hour, two hours maybe a night, come back to get our skates off and our boots would be frozen almost, you know, get in those cold boots and get to the house. What kinds of stores were there when, back when you were young? Well, I lived in central Cambridge, which is about nine miles from Cambridge down in Washington Way. Um, the only stores I remember was one at Gemsag, Stan Dykeman's general store, and there was one here, one or two in front in Cambridge. Uh, Gordon Robinson had a store where that restaurant is now, and just below uh, where the post office used to be, there was a store there too. And those are the two stores I remember. Which which store was your favorite? Mm, I don't. I think we would have gone to Lower Gemsag store, but I, when we were children, we never went to the store like children do now. And we never went in and wanted chips and pop and candy and all that. I remember when I was even about 12 or 13 years old, I went to the store of my dad. He was uh, in Upper Gemsag. And I sat out in the car. I didn't ask to go in. And he didn't ask me to go in. But I sat out there and waited and waited for him. But when he came out, he had a cone of ice cream for me. And I was so pleased. You know, it's so different now, isn't it? Um, I remember when I was a child, I used to spend summers in Queenstown from about the time I was three until I was 13, and with a couple there. I used to go up to the store there, it was a general store, but the thing I remember about that was they had a big glass case. You just went in the door and it was on the counter. It was probably five feet long and four feet wide and three feet high, but you could look in that case and it was filled with all kinds of candy in little boxes, and you might have five cents to spend or whatever, but you could get three pieces of candy for a cent. So you'd have three of this kind, and three of that kind, and three of another kind. So you could get a lot of candy for five cents. And I re that was McKinney's store, and Douglas McKinney now lives in Queenstown. Uh, he doesn't own the store. In fact, that isn't even running any operating anymore. Can you tell me about the highlights in your life? I've had an interesting life, very interesting. I've been involved in so many things and enjoyed so many. I worked after my husband died in 85. I uh, went to work, well, I worked actually at the restaurant for a while. That's one of the things I'd never done. And so I worked there for a while. And then I worked at the Milko Nursing Home for 11 years in the dietary. That means a kit, the uh, to do with food, not make preparing meals, but serving, cleaning up, uh, stocking the uh, kitchenettes, and so forth. I worked there eleven years casually, but at the end, the casual turned into almost a lot of hours. 
I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the pay, the residents of the home, and uh, they were always uh, glad to see you. And it was it was really a good job. And from there, I worked um, before that. I actually, I worked as a receptionist for Dr. Stackhouse, and she at that time was practicing from the uh, the um, professional uh, building attached to Milko Nursing Home. And I, one of the things I always wanted to do was do volunteer work. So I inquired of the, at the um, Dr. Albert, Everett Chalmers Hospital, and they were in need of volunteers. And so uh, after interviews, I was chosen to um, go to the palliative w ward. I found that very interesting, um, very emotional if you let it get to you. Of course, there in the palliative ward, uh, people are there because uh, the doctors can't do anything more for them as far as um, new medicines and so forth. The families who came there to see them, um, we were sort of a, a boost to them. We had a little unit, much changed now. They have a large where we prepared uh, tea, coffee, and just uh, served them. I remember one lady, um, she, we talked about uh, what she liked and so forth, and asked her if she'd like to have a little tea party, which she thought she would. So I, we had fancy cups and uh, made tea and had some little sweets and things and took in, and she and I had a tea party. And that was really rewarding, not only to her, but to me. When you do something like that, it, you know, in your heart, it makes you feel you've helped somebody. So I enjoyed that work, but I was a, could go every week. There were different people chosen every day. But then I found it was a long drive, and um, so I just gradually gave that up. But I did, I did really like that. I also uh, liked to enjoy meeting people, and uh, I heard of Farm Vacation. It was just starting way back years. When you advertise, I like you take people at your home, and they would watch what you're doing outside farming, whatever. And but they'd stay all night, and you provide the meals, and that was interesting. A lot of hard work because families would come. Maybe I remember one family came from uh, Toronto, a man and his wife and two teenagers, and they were there for five days. And um, they just uh, didn't do much work on the farm, <clears throat> but at nights we played games and they played out on the lawn. <clears throat> and um, when we, um, this family I'm speaking of, they were on, say, three days at the farm, and <clears throat> they thought maybe they'd like to go to Fredericton, you know, to see some. In the program of Farm Vacation, families would come and stay two days, three days, a week. And one particular family came from Toronto, a man and his wife and two teenage children. And they were having such a great time. I remember we played a crokinole at night and they played games, uh, lawn croquet, and they just had a great time. And of course they enjoyed the meals. The parents thought maybe about the midway through they'd like to go to Frederick and see what was going on up there. No, they didn't want to go. They didn't go. They just wanted to stay around with us. But it was just like a big happy family. The other one that I might mention is um, a family came from the United States. And uh, <clears throat> he did go out and help a little bit. <clears throat> but. Another family came from the United States, and they uh, did the same thing. They just swam, went swimming, played games, enjoyed, and uh, had many families like that. Then we got the idea, it was just being introduced, farm uh, bed and breakfast. And that would mean somebody would just come and stay overnight. And so we advertised... Uh, well, I should say, even before the province knew about it, if they had some tourists wanting to just stay in a, a country home overnight, they would call us 
and they didn't call it bed and breakfast then really, but they wanted to know if we would take them for the night, which we did. Then, as I say, um, bed and breakfast was born. Thank you for the interview, Lucille Hunter, and I hope you enjoyed the interview. I did very much, and thank you for asking me. I really enjoyed, and I hope that there'll be some things that you might look at and think, well, wasn't so bad after all those years. Thank you.